This is a nuclear fusion reactor. When developing a reactor, we want to make it as effective at power production as we can. But fundamental laws of physics provide limits to what is possible. However, a recent discovery has rewritten a theory from 1988, which set one of the limits we currently work to. This discovery is huge for nuclear fusion, as it could double the energy in the reactor. To understand this discovery, we can first look at how a nuclear reactor is designed. During this process, we can simplify things down to one main objective, which is called the triple product. To explain that, let's recap on the basics of a nuclear reactor, which in this case will be the common tokamak reactor. Tokamaks use superconductive electromagnets to confine or squeeze together extremely hot plasma into a donut shape. In our case, this plasma contains deuterium and tritium ions, which are the fuel for nuclear fusion. The aim for fusion is to get these to collide with enough energy that they can fuse together to create a helium nucleus, and in the process, release energy. The main objective that I'd previously mentioned is then to optimize something known as the triple product. This triple product is a combination of the density of ions in the plasma, the plasma temperature, and the energy confinement time. The best temperature for our type of nuclear fusion, between deuterium and tritium, is about 100 million degrees Celsius, or five times the sun's core. With the temperature set, we now want to reach the best triple product we can, by either increasing the ion fuel density of the plasma, or by increasing the energy confinement time. In this video, we'll be focusing on the ion density. So ideally, we would increase this indefinitely. However, there are laws of physics at play that mean there is a limit to the density that can be achieved before the plasma collapses and fusion stops altogether. In the 1980s, this was a hot topic of research. And in 1988, Martin Greenwald provided an equation which explained the limit of iron density in the plasma. This limit is known as the Greenwald limit, and it has been used for designing the largest and most complex fusion reactors to this day. The Greenwald limit states that the maximum ion density is equal to the current in the plasma divided by the area inside the plasma ring. But this had a problem. This law was derived solely from experimental data. This means now that fusion reactors are getting more powerful than ever before, certain relationships are at play that Martin Greenwald was unable to see. This is where the new discovery that could have huge implications for nuclear fusion comes in. Published on the 6th of May by Maurizio Giacomin and his team, a new equation describing the limit for ion density has been proposed. Instead of using experimental data to find this, the equation is based on first principles and includes everything we know about tokamak fusion reactors. While this new equation looks pretty complex, the important finding is this. This crucial part of the equation means that as more power is used to heat the plasma, the density limit actually increases. So for modern high-powered tokamak reactors, the ion density can be much higher than previously thought. But why is this the case and what are the impacts of this in practice? So the reason we have this ion fuel density limit in the first place is because if it gets too high, the plasma will collapse. As we increase the density, the plasma on the outside cools down. And because cold plasma is less dense than hot plasma, it causes pressure to build up. This disrupts the magnetically confined plasma altogether. However, if we have a lot of power going into the reactor to heat the outer edge, we can prevent the outer edge getting too cold. This stops the temperature gradient building up, therefore minimizing the outward pressure, allowing us to increase the density much more than previously thought. So what does this mean in practice for fusion energy? And is it finally closer than 30 years away? Maurizio and his team have applied this new density limit to the ITER reactor, an international nuclear fusion research and engineering mega project that will be the largest tokamak ever made. They found that due to the huge amount of power that will be used to heat the plasma, the ion fuel density can actually be twice what the Martin Greenwald's limit predicts, therefore allowing 200% of the predicted energy to be held within the plasma. If we look back to the triple product, we can plot a useful graph for comparison. In this case, the y-axis is the triple product, 
and the x-axis is our temperature. With double the ion density, the ITER project could have double the triple product. This causes the red dot to shift from here to here. This is a huge breakthrough, as anything within the blue shaded area is supposedly viable for a power plant using deuterium and tritium as fuel. This means ITER would be further into this area and shows commercial power from fusion is becoming ever closer to a reality. However, as ITER has already been designed using the green world limit, it is unlikely to see the benefits from this breakthrough. But thankfully, there is a new big project being developed called DEMO. This is the planned successor to ITER and it could still account for this new limit in its design. DEMO will be even more powerful, so this new limit is highly relevant and the plan is to actually extract power from it for the first time using nuclear fusion. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and check out this video on why China is building an underground nuclear lab.